everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have been working on fall cards finally um, today in my craft room so I thought at the end of the video I'd share um, a really cute card that I made. I was kind of, I had an idea in my head of what I wanted, a technique I wanted to try with it and it actually ended up turning out so I'm going to show you that at the end but first I'll get to the fun stuff. Um, I recently purchased a couple things for Christmas um, that can kind of help me get through the season. Uh, mostly it's kind of paper type supplies. Um, I didn't get a ton of stamps or anything because I have so many Christmas stamps, but I did want to get some things for journaling. Um, I have a, I do want to make at least one Christmas journal um, for the season. And then just also some other uh, little paper type Christmas things that can act as embellishments and things like that. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, I've talked about uh, Kathy Holden's designs. She had a uh, flea market finds design over on um, Spellbinders. You can also pick it up on scrapbook.com, but I love her kind of flea market style. Let me show you what I picked up. They actually, a lot of it has sold out um, on Spellbinders. It may be back when I'm making this video, so I'll go ahead and take a look and I can put some links. But I was able to pick up a paper pad and a couple of the ephemera packs. There was a sticker uh, pack that had like a ton of stickers in it that I wanted to pick up, but it wasn't available. So this is called Christmas Flea Market Finds, and it just has kind of the old-fashioned Christmas look. And I just, I, I love these. It almost looks like needlepoint. Um, if you look at the background, it's kind of like a dotted background, um, but just these papers are nice. They're, they're thinner, which I actually like because I think these would be nice, again, to put in to journals as kind of a signature. They're uh, nine, six by nine, so they're kind of long and narrow, so they'd be really pretty to add to a journal, but I love, I love this page here, and then that one, and this is so cute with the houses. I'm not sure if there are repeats or how this works, so we'll kind of go through. So pretty. They almost have like a greeting card look to them, like an old-fashioned greeting card. It's really pretty. This has a little bit more of kind of a, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a grungy look, but more of kind of like a weathered look to it, um, which I don't mind for Christmas because it kind of gives that old-fashioned look. Although this one is okay. It's got the really bright white background which I'm always talking about that I like. Um, this looks like it's from the front of a vintage greeting card. Love that plaid. Okay, so it must have two of each page and that just starts over again. So that's nice. So you have two, two of each page to use. And then I won't go through all the ephemera pieces, but I'll just kind of give you a quick, quick peek at some of the stuff. Um, one of them is called Jingle Bells and one is Christmas Pines. Christmas Pines, I think, is more of tags and that kind of thing. And then um, Jingle Bells is more of kind of like little different sized pieces. So you've got Christmas trees, birds. That bird is cute. Little recipes, bookmark. Oh, tags. These are so cute. Love all of these. And then I'll just give you a quick look at um, the Christmas pines, too. I want to say I thought these were still available. But there's just less of um, kind of more ephemera type things, but more more tags, too, in this one. So really pretty. Oh, there's so much. I'm so excited to work with these. So I'm definitely going to be putting these in some journals. I haven't decided how I want to do my journal, if I want to do a whole, you know, start from scratch cover, or if I want to use, I've been, uh, last year I had a couple, and actually I have them in my shop right now. Um, I used cookbook covers from those advertising cookbooklets. I use those kind of a Christmassy looking one for the covers of my uh, journals for Christmas. And those were kind of fun to do, but I may, I may do a kind of from scratch one and maybe do a Christmas material, fabric covered one and um, kind of just really, uh, do a full-on journal so we'll see how that turns so out next up the um peachy cheap had a fancy pants designs cookies for kringle collection offer uh, about a week ago and so i picked it up you got kind of a little sampling of um 
cookies for Kringle. And I thought it was so cute. I'll show you the paper first. It came with a few sheets of 12 by 12 paper. They're double sided. And this first page is my absolute favorite and actually is going to be the inspiration for my next journal. Um, it's pretty plaid on this side. And then these dishes on the other side. I love the colors in this, which is actually, I think, going to be what I'm going to be um, making a journal with, like this kind of color scheme. Um, and then just the dishes alone are just the kind of like the vintage looking Christmas dishes. And you could, I think you could probably trim off, make borders with them, um, just do a whole page with the dishes. I don't know. It's just, it's, they're just so pretty. So I love this page here. And then you get one that had kind of a floral design and then another plaid so lots of plaids and florals in this this is pretty too this mint and green like little sprigs and then this pretty kind of wood grain background it's a lighter wood grain i really like that too candy canes perfect for christmas more kind of christmas florals some stars and then another kind of floral design and then I kind of like this darker background. This is pretty with the darker green sprigs. And then little gingerbread men and snowman cookies on the back of that one. So it's nice. You kind of get a little, little sample of everything. And then um, this was the tags and cards. Flip through these real quick. So white backgrounds and then just some nice bright designs. Really cute. I like that. Little old fashioned images. Oh, I love this. This might be my favorite. <laughs> the bowls. I love vintage bowls. And then more ephemera. These are just kind of regular little ephemera pieces. It's sort of that vintage kitchen look some vintage little ladies cooking, baking cookies, little oven. This little bundt cake is adorable. Oh, I love the jello mold. These are great. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have to make two journals because this kind of all goes together for kind of the lighter color journal. And then the, the Kathy Holden pieces, I think I might do a more kind of a cozy Christmas, um, maybe another kind of uh, advertising cookbook journal with the, with those. I think those will be nice for that. Um, but I like to have two kinds of, of kind of looks to my journals. I like kind of the bright Christmas with the whites and the mints and, and those kind of colors. And then I also like the more traditional look too with just the darker reds and greens. Oh, these little bowls, I just love those. Those are great. Little bingo card. So this will be a lot of fun to work with. It also came with a set of enamel dots, which I, as I always say, I, I can never have too many of those. I always use them. And then this cute little set of puffy stickers with just some more little cute images that kind of match with what's on the uh, ephemera. So this is Cookies for Kringle. And I ended up actually uh, picking up the collection pack. They have a collection pack on... Uh, well, they have it in a bunch of different places, but I picked this up at a cherry on top because I really wanted some more of this 12 by 12 paper, especially the little dishes. So the collection pack was nice because it's not huge. It doesn't have, you know, a ton in it, but it gives you, again, like kind of a little sampling of everything. I won't open the whole thing up, but I actually need to open it for, um, there were a couple other things I picked up. So in the collection pack of Cookies for Kringle, you get um, two each of the 12 by 12 papers. So this will be plenty for me to work with. And then uh, enamel dots and then a paper tags and card set. So I showed you this earlier. This is the, the tags and cards, which are really cute. And then another set of enamel dots, which you know, I, I can always use them. <laughs> but I mainly got it for the paper, which is nice. And um, so this will be really good to use for my journals. And then along with that order, I just picked up uh, this embossing folder from Altenew. 
um, I believe this, I think they were having some clearance items. I think this was one of the clearance items. Um, I just like these florals. I thought these were really pretty. I like how they're kind of in a big bunch, kind of going through diagonally. Um, you can put it on a card. So this is a six by six embossing folder. So probably when, you know, to make a card, you'll have to trim it down. But I kind of look the, like the look of, you know, when you trim it, you get a little bit kind of going off the edge. It makes it look like it's kind of continuing on. So, so I thought this would be really pretty. I like anything floral. And then this uh, polka dot buds layering stencil set, which has got kind of this fun floral retro theme. And you can actually use the dots separately from the little leaves or combine them together um, to do, you know, different ink blending techniques. So I thought this would just be nice. I like to make kind of retro style uh, greeting cards too. So I just, I like working with stencils. So I thought that would be fun to work with. And then the last thing I picked up was from Michael's, kind of in the, in the Christmas theme. Um, I actually picked up something. They had something like this last year. This is from their Recollections uh, paper, themed paper. And a lot of this is, is similar to what they had last year, but yet a little bit different. Um, this, I picked up a plaid, paper pad, which I love the plaids in these. They're double-sided. Actually, let me open this a little bit better. This is called uh, Christmas Plaids. And it just has uh, six by six papers. I think it's two of each patterns you get. They're nice and thick. And these are kind of more masculine looking plaids. And they're very kind of that, that cozy by the fireside look. I really like these. So um, these are always nice to have. And you can use these year round. These would be nice for fall too, um, fall and winter. So it's not, they're not just kind of Christmas themed, which is nice. And then I did pick up uh, Meet Me Under the Mistletoe. And this was kind of an old fashioned, kind of retro vintage looking paper pad here. Um, just some cute, cute ginghams. I like that red diagonal gingham. And some plaids. That plaid's nice. Candy canes. Lots of really cute, cute things. Poinsettias. So I like the navy blue mixed in too. I think that looks really good. So this is Meet Me Under the Mistletoe. And then um, this doesn't really have, oh, Christmas no Christmas Noel. I'm not sure if that's what this is called or if it's just saying Christmas. <laughs> but anyway, this is from Recollections. Uh, they had similar, these are stickers, but they're large ephemera uh, paper pieces, but they have uh, sticker backing on them. And what you what I usually like to do um, which I've talked about in the past is just taking one of these little powder bags that you would use for heat embossing and you can peel off the, the backing of the sticker and kind of tap the powder bag on and it can get rid of the stickiness of the, the ephemera piece with the sticker on it. But um, this just has some really cute Santas and Christmas trees, uh, poinsettias. I'll open this real quick. You can kind of get an example of what these look like. These would make nice tags too. Oh, and you get two of each. This is cute. The car with the presents. I love that. The candy canes, mistletoe, little front door. So these are cute. And then they have a, kind of a matching sticker book too. And this just has kind of smaller stickers with a whole variety of different Santas and little uh, sentiments. So cute, very small for uh, little tags. You could put them on tags and then little border stickers too. So these will be nice to use. And then I picked up some more of these. I had uh, similar, these were actually, they were actually thinner candy canes last year. And I kind of like these a little bit better. This is just a um, kind of candy canes and little uh, round candies, peppermint candies. So you get a pack of these, the green and red, and then you get these candy canes. Which are fun. And again, they have sticker backing on them. You just peel off the, the backing and you can use them as a sticker. But I love the the kind of smooth glitter on them and then the big chunky bow. And they're just really festive. So there's tons of stuff you can do with these. Add them to tags or gift 
gift tops, um, cards. So it's, I think these are, these are kind of like a, a basic supply for Christmas. I think you can never have too much of. And then let's see. Oh, and then I got one other sticker book. This is the Merry Christmas sticker book. And this just has more kind of retro themed stickers in it too. So those are fun. I like these, the poinsettias. I love the pink because they're really pretty. So these were from Michaels. And then I just have a quick card I wanted to show you. I had been planning on making a lot of fall cards and I had I'd been so busy with some other things that I haven't had a chance to really get in and and start working on fall cards but um today I was kind of experimenting and um you know I had an idea that I wanted to try with this my lar I have the large die of the month club I'm in with spellbinders and I got this really cute uh die set called thankful tractor and I've seen some really cute projects on Instagram and this is just the back. So it's got a little tractor and then with a little wagon and it's filled with um, vegetables from the fall. And you can do all kinds of different things with it. I even saw somebody do, I think it was on the Spellbinders website, they turned it into a Christmas themed tractor. So the tractor was pulling a Christmas tree. So there's a lot you could do with this too for all seasons, I think. But I wanted to work with the little vegetables because this corn was just making me smile. I love the little little kernels and how it, you can kind of layer it. So I was thinking uh, too, I like to work a lot. I like to keep my cards simple, but I like to use techniques or different kind of specialized inks. And some of my favorite inks to use are these Delicata inks. And you may have seen these. They're a pigment ink, but they have a little bit of shimmer in them, but they're, they're a really nice quality. And I have about, I think I have every color you can get. There's quite a few. I have a dark navy blue. There's a black. Um, but the ones I'm working with, worked with on this card um, were kind of in this kind of fall color theme. And let me show you the card. So what I did was, I of course, I used my, I've, in my previous video, I talked about how I'm all about cane print this season. I love cane print. And I have this paper pad from Hobby Lobby and it's just kind of embossed craft paper with different designs on it and my favorite design is this cane print so there's I still have a few pages left so I'm excited I can because I've been using it for everything um, but I thought it would be fun to combine the cane print with the little vegetables from the die set and then I wanted to see if I could kind of make the vegetables sort of shimmery and then put a little gloss over them with some heat embossing. So that's what I did. I basically, um, I just covered the front of a white note card with the cane print paper. And then I added just a simple frame. This is, I think this is from Lawn Fawn, just a simple cutout frame. And then I was kind of trying to pick the best colors for the vegetables. And I also ended up using, I like these, they're sort of like an ombre uh, type ink. So it's got, there's like four different colors. You can, Hero Arts has inks like this, um, but in a dye form. Um, there's a lot of different types of these inks you can get. Um, but this is a little collection of inks that I, I have a bunch of different color versions of uh, that is a pigment ink. So it works really well with heat embossing. And so I chose this one. It has oranges and yellows in it that I thought would be good for the pumpkin. So I have Delicata for the little butternut squash and the corn. And then the, this is called Let's Color. Um, this is just off of Amazon. Um, that's the, what was on the pumpkin. And so I can show you really quick how I did this. It's very easy to do. Um, so if you have any kind of you know shimmery pigment ink the pigment ink works better with the heat embossing because it stays wet longer so you can um any and i also like it because the pigment ink you get a lot of color on your die cut um, and i'll show you what i mean by that in a second um so let me go ahead and show you how i use this so i just i cut out a little pumpkin here um, from the the die set and all I do is just take a piece of scrap paper. It can get kind of messy. It doesn't get that messy, but it can. 
and I keep all my scrap paper. So this is an old card that I messed up on or it was crooked or something. So I just use this for, for ink blending. So you just put your die cut here and then um, you take your ink. So depending on what ink you're using, um, if it's just the Delicata, you just want to kind of smush the ink over the top of the die cut. And with this one, I want to try to get kind of the gradient look that this pumpkin has, which I can't believe I got it the first time. <laughs> Usually I end up doing a bunch of them, but this this ink works very nicely. It's very smooth. So it um, it kind of all went on perfectly. So try, I'm trying to keep the orange on the bottom as kind of a shadow and then go lighter towards the top. So we'll see if I can recreate this again. <laughs> so uh, with the ink, you kind of want to just sort of smooth it over the top of the die cut. You know, this, this, I think I have to get another one of these because I've had this for a long time and I think it needs more ink. But you just kind of, you know, glide it over the top of the pumpkin. Get some of that orange on there too. And it's really easy. I want to get some of that middle color too. Kind of a darker yellow. And I mean, you really can't mess it up because no, no pumpkin is perfect. They all have little blemishes on them. So even if you kind of get a weird color smearing of the ink, it, it doesn't really matter because that's what a pumpkin really looks like. You don't want it to be too perfect or it looks like a cartoonish. <laughs> so, so you just kind of, you know, until you're happy with, with how it looks. I'm trying to get some of that middle there. So I think that looks really good. So before you want, you don't you want to kind of work quickly. Um, the pigment ink does stay wet for a little bit longer, but it doesn't actually dry. And then what I like to do is use this. I have this filigree clear embossing powder. This I got off of paper tray ink. I really like this particular powder because it's super fine. And so if you have, if you go online anywhere and look for clear embossing powder, um, try to find the very fine embossing powders. You don't want real chunky ones because it doesn't look as good, but these fine ones um, look really good. So I'm using my, these are my new little uh, tweezers from Michael's. These have already come in handy so much because they're, these, the tips on these are so small that you can just hold your die cut just at the very edge so that you don't make a big mess with your embossing powder. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over to my sink and do my embossing over there. And then I'll come back and show you. So I don't know if you can see up close, just the uh, kind of the glimmer of the clear embossing powder. But I think it just gives a more realistic look to the vegetables. Um, you know, a lot of times you see the pumpkins that are shiny and um, even some of the other fall vegetables, they look like that when you um, buy them. So I thought it kind of adds a little more elegance to the card. And then I just added a really simple uh, autumn themed sentiment. This is from quite a few years ago from My Favorite Things. And it's just got some nice fall sentiments on it. So I kept it pretty simple, but I really like the way um, the corn and everything turned out. I used for the butternut squash, I used this really pretty champagne color um, of Delicata. And then, um, Oh, the brown I used for the stem of the pumpkin, and then the green was around around the corn. And then the corn, I used the gold, because I, I just thought it would look more interesting with the gold um, kind of shimmer to it. So, so it's just a kind of a little added fun. Um, you can't really see the shimmer of the, the uh, pigment ink too much, so it's not real glittery looking, but it just, it adds a little something that maybe just a plain um, pigment ink wouldn't give. And then again, with the, the gradient ink, this just looks really nice with having the kind of multicolor of the pumpkin. So, so just kind of a, a fun and different uh, way to use your inks and, or way to use interesting inks to, to kind of dress up a simple card. So, so I'm going to continue making some more fall cards. Um, go 
over to my Instagram account where you can see kind of all of, um, I usually put just my cards and my final projects on there if you're interested in seeing more fall projects. Um, I'm gonna keep working on those because um, I did want to get a few done for, for this season. And um, let me know if you have any questions about anything I've showed you today. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.